Bruno, just off the bat, the first thing, who is your dog in this picture? We need to, <laughs> if you have, that's if Rita. you have your, hey, Rita. That, yeah, that's Rita. Rita. Even though, Bruno, that the community, we all love technicals, technical fundamentals, and, and the coins pricing actions, but we know without a proper technical structure, there has, it has to be supported by solid fundamentals in a company with good technology. So can you tell us a little bit more about RMRK as it's one of the most advanced NFT protocols in the space, in the existence, um, how you come up with the idea and what is the project all about? Uh, just as a simple for the people that don't know about it, yeah, just sure. to get um, a so overview. If, if you're familiar with games, with strategy games where you have um, like a technology where you can research it and then you have like you research one part and then another one unlocks and then another one unlocks. So if you think of the NFT technology at large as one of those tech trees, Remark is the final stage of that development. So Remark is the, the final stage of NFT technology that will it will not go further. So we've developed standards that allow anybody, any NFT project to build anything of any complexity, fully decentralized. And it is the only set of NFT standards that allows a decentralized metaverse to exist. So every other metaverse out there today is just a multiplayer game that replaced usernames and passwords with reading an NFT balance. Remark turns all of that upside down. And so here we have a set of standards that allows you to do literally anything with NFTs. And um, there are thousands of use cases, so it's very difficult to explain something that can do everything. Um, but in general, it solves music, it solves royalty, partial royalties to um, sub-composers of songs. It solves um, you know, filters you can equip onto movies to remix visuals. It solves uh, fully decentralized backends and metaverses that don't need centralized servers that will inevitably go down because they become too expensive to maintain. Um, essentially, it is the final stage of the NFT evolution in, in many ways. And anything you want to build on NFTs, you should build on Remark. Mm, that's really impressive. Yeah, so you say you've really got the one-stop shop solution within the space that that's the place where everyone needs to build. And, and we're going to get a little bit more in the tokenomics and all of that in a little bit. But yeah, that's really impressive. Now, I've got here the Kusama blockchain. And when you've done your research and development beforehand, what did you see in the Kusama blockchain than any other blockchain to make you decide to build on them? Uh, clean slate. Uh, it was really important. Well, I was I was building Kusama at that time, so it was natural to build inside of it. But also uh, the fact that there were no incumbents, there were no there was no bureaucracy to hold us back. We were free to innovate as much as we wanted to innovate. Uh, we were free to build our own stuff and iterate really quickly, break things and retry, uh, mm -hmm. without having to go through the bureaucratic process of standard approval and and you know all of that sort of stuff. So uh, it allowed us to really launch five full-fledged products in a year and come up with the best NFT infrastructure um, in the world. For comparison, um, the, the standard for adding royalties to NFTs was merged uh, late last year into Ethereum after three years of discussion. And this is two optional values added to the NFTs, two optional little um, values that you can add to them. They, this was a three-year discussion. And so... Um, when you take into account how much bureaucracy there was needed, how much how much discussing was needed to just, to just make that little incremental upgrade, it was unimaginable to us how adding remark into it would would look. So we decided to build first and then you know ask permission later. <laughs> that's that's always a good option to go. And I sometimes do with, do that with Morris as well. You just do something first and then you ask permission. Hundred percent. No, that and that gives hundred percent. Like you say, the flexibility into building something on a product that you can just tweak and customize as you go to fit within your product scope. So on your on your website, you've got here eternally liquid, forward compatible, nested, conditional, and multi-resource NFTs. Uh, what is that in layman's terms for for the community, so that they can understand what is the thinking about these sayings, and um, mm -hmm. how does that apply? Yeah, so um, it's it's pretty it's pretty hard to uh, 
put it into something very, very simple, but essentially we have a system. We have, uh, we've developed five um, standalone standards, NFT 2.0 standards that we call NFT 2.0 Legos. And you can put together into complex uh, systems. And these allow you to make an uh, evolvable NFT. These allow you to make dynamic character progression NFTs like for games. These allow you uh, to have NFTs within other NFTs. And these allow you to continually add value to an NFT. So right now, let, uh, like on a really simple example, in Ethereum or any other ecosystem right now, if you have a collection of 10,000 elephant NFTs and four of them have a red hat, the rarity of the red-headed elephant is four in 10,000. And that's it. That's the end of the story. With Remark, not only can you take that red hat and put it onto any of the elephants, you can also launch a new collection of pandas or raccoons and make that hat compatible with them very, very easily in a single click. And this makes the rarity of the red hat no longer four in 10,000. It makes it four in 20,000 or 30,000 or however many other things it's compatible with. And so you have this concept of dynamic rarity applied to NFTs that are cross collection compatible. So we've solved the global creator economy problem where everybody can contribute to everything. And this is also what makes decentralized metaverses possible. Yeah, that's that's a mouthful. Thanks for that simple explanation. I'm sure everyone got it. So that's fantastic. And then you you had your IDO last year with Canaria NFT collections. Can you explain how that was all conducted and how that played out in your favor? Um, um, there was there was no IDO. We just sold NFTs and then we fair dropped. Um, a hundred percent of the token supply to the egg egg owners, egg holders. So we were selling these NFT eggs, and everybody who had eggs got a proportional amount of the total supply of the token. So we gave out a hundred percent of our token supply. This is what prevented um, massive dumps below the selling price. Uh, this is what also kind of uh, removed the the flipping VCs out of the picture, and this is what kept the community heavily invested. For a, for a long period of time. Um, the goal was to have the fairest distribution possible and to just get the bare minimum of funds needed to build something impressive so that we could do our second raise, which we are now in the process of with, with this new SDK that we're, uh, we're doing a strategic raise with. Okay, so there's more coming uh, in that part as well, but I'm assuming it's not going to affect the tokenomics that you've got in place at the moment. No, no. That's amazing because I see the tokenomics is only 10, 10 million maximum supply. And that's why we're so positive from a technical perspective regarding the kind of liquidity that it needs to push up the price in the future. I'm sure this was clearly thought out with a plan why you wanted the low amount of coins in, circulate, in circulation. Well, can you explain a little bit just in brief what the tokenomics is about? Uh, for the community and how that's actually benefiting your team. Yeah, it's more like um, it's a it's a token with governance and kind of NFT. Like so, the 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 main point of the token is that those who hold it are true shareholders of the company itself, and uh, through that the token has a lot of utility. It is the primary token for use in the Skybridge metaverse. It is the primary token that will be used for NFT minting, trading, and all the other stuff um, as we as we launch the you know that that part of the phase. Um, and there, it's also a, a heavily used governance um, token for token curated lists of official uh, collections that will have that aforementioned um, dynamic rarity score. So this this has a common registry on a smart contract. And so it's kind of like an official registry of collections that are cross compatible with each other and that get this dynamic uh, rarity indicator. So there's a lot of utility here that pertains specifically to these advanced functionalities, not possible elsewhere. And all of that is captured in the remark token. Yeah, that, that's a little bit different from just having a part of a token in another environment where you now, like you say, it's a shareholder. It's a little bit more free for the, for the community to have a say. I'd imagine at the end of the day. So that's really amazing. Then what we can see is you've got your Q3, you've got your Q4, everything planned out. Is, is this the scope? But I'm sure you've got a longer term vision as well going into 2022, 2023. 
is is this the focus on it for the team at the moment to purely work on this do you have another team that's going to planning into the the future of of the technology within where you want to be in the mm-hmm. next two three four years yeah so um in in four years i hope to be uh, away from from all of this and climbing a mountain with my daughter on my back or something but um, in terms of two years or so, we hope to have the CypherMod SDK ready. And the CypherMod SDK is a new product that we're building in partnership with Fala, which is uh, why it's not documented here. It has its own, own website. Um, that's the strategic race we're doing right now. And that is actually an evolution of the Remark toolkit, uh, but combined with this Fala network toolkit as well. This is our, our building partner where we are actually creating an SDK that can build a fully decentralized metaverse for any, a fully decentralized game experience, game-like experience for any existing or new metaverse. And so it's like a point and click adventure of launching your own thing, of forking an existing game and launching your own thing. Because right now um, the metaverse space is suffering because uh, A, it's, it's all fake. So there's nothing there's nothing in it. It's, it's all just multiplayer games, but uh, B, the total amount of experiences that exists in, um, any metaverse put together is like four hours. Um, that's, that's how much playtime you can get out of it. And it's all just platformers, just jumping around. Um, there's no players in these systems because there's no builders and there's no builders because there's no players. So it's a catch 22 when you need to hire a full game development team to build something good. And so this SDK is our next plan that allows anybody to launch something in a few clicks. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. It's the future that you guys are planning and I, I really hope not hope. I know it's going to plan out because you've got the team, you've got the liquidity, you've got the fundamentals, you've got everything down to make this the the play for the future. So what I what I saw here on your company's Twitter account, you said you are actually now going into into Skybridge, which is your new innovation to go and buy land. So can you tell us a little bit more about Skybridge and how that is going to also see on the website just have a look at this yeah so skybridge skybridge is our proof of concept decentralized metaverse it is the first and only decentralized metaverse that exists right now that is going to exist when it launches um without any kind of server needed uh without any kind of single point of failure that can go down and make your experience disappear um and the the world itself is an nft that world contains plots of land that are NFTs. Those plots of land contain buildings that are NFTs. Those buildings contain avatars that are NFTs. Those avatars contain backpacks that are NFTs and those backpacks contain NFTs themselves. So it's all a nested NFT infrastructure. And at the top level is the NFT world itself, which is a DAO, which means that it's controlled by the community of avatars themselves. Mm -hmm. So the community has full power to alter everything in the lore, everything in the map, every every single aspect from a single texture of a blade of grass to destroying an entire skyland. They can do everything they want. Um, Even vote in new avatars that can help them co-control this world and and do other stuff. And so um, the Skybridge map is our first uh, product in this Skybridge suite. It is the world's most advanced metaverse land sale map for now. Um, we've really we've really outdone and not just ourselves but everybody with this map. It's it's really uh, it's really stellar. And um, and yeah, this land sale went better than expected because people seem to recognize the the enormous potential of this technology. So we're very excited to see where it goes. The next phase is just evolving uh, the Skybridge story part by part and uh, building on these Remark Legos, NFT 2.0 Legos, to demonstrate the technology as best we can. I'm going to have to get some land. Maurice, we're going to have to get some land in, in Skybridge for Bitcoin Tav. Absolutely, absolutely. I love, <laughs> I love what I see. I love what I see. Thank you. He must just let us know where he's actually buying his parts of land so we can get close to him because he knows where the, where the high density proper places are going to be. So uh, that's, that's tru- truly amazing. So coming to the end of this, the metaverse space, there's so many companies getting into the metaverse. What we've seen, for example, Nike and, and then McDonald's and these people want to share in the pie for metaverse. What do you see the future for the metaverse to play out? Is there any practically practical way that we can see how it can take shape? And when can it be adopted to the bigger market? Is it going to be in three years, five years, where people are actually going to, for a mass adoption, 
to accept and play around a little bit more. Don't know what the exact user amount currently is, but a global population, I think we're still far off before we get to that massive adoption. Uh, yeah, so the current picture is quite disappointing because of that lack of experiences. Um, there's a total of 1,000 daily users across Decentraland and Sandbox combined. And these are the two most, most popular uh, metaverses today. Mm. That's that is absolutely rid ridiculous. Um, this is something that we hope to change with CypherMod as it makes as it, as it makes building these experiences incredibly easy for these existing metaverses, but also for new ones. So we hope to change this landscape significantly, single-handedly in the next year. Um, as far as the other metaverse projects right now coming out, I think we'll see a lot of death and um, uh, a lot of just uh, them fizzling out of existence, purely because every single metaverse today is just a multiplayer game running on a centralized server. And by definition, this and because they have you know uh, ancient NFT standards and use that are non-evolvable, static, just NFTs that are that are basically translated to spam in your wallet. Um, what you end up with is. Uh, a bunch of games that are that are vampire attacking each other. They're competing with each other for the same player base. And as those players leave, those game funds dry up. And so those servers become too expensive to maintain. And so they shut down because nobody wants to, you know, hold uh, an expensive server alive for 20 people. And so they will be shutting down and shutting down and shutting down and shutting down. We'll see this cycle of death and rebirth for, for a while until people realize that, you know, you should actually grow the pie together. And that growing the pie together is only possible exclusively with Remark, because anything you launch on Remark um, automatically becomes compatible with everything that exists, uh, that it has existed in the past and will exist in the future. That's what eternally liquid means or forward compatible, where if you have an asset that you launch, that is automatically compatible. That collection is automatically compatible with the, a previous metaverse or a future metaverse. So every game that joins this ecosystem through this SDK will actually add value quadratically to everything that already exists in there. And so this is hard to understand right now while nothing still exists, but um, just like the, you know, the, the value proposition of Remark itself becomes clear when you uh, sit down, think about it and put it into practice, this will also become clear when it happens. But by then, a lot of people will be like, oh, why haven't I noticed this before? So stay tuned, you'll see a, a really big revolution. That's amazing. Yeah, and that's the, exactly why I'm so excited for Remark is the speciality where you guys focus on and for the coin price from our community perspective, where the value is going to be for users, for adoption, for more players, for other people to build on this ecosystem to bring that scalability and adoption at, for the masses. And that's what it's about. The fundamentals support technicals and the two goes hand in hand. So thank you so much, Bruno. Feel free to follow up on social or wherever you want. I'm, I'm always online, happy to answer any questions. Thank you all for having me. Yeah. Thanks, Bruno. Thank you so much, Bruno. We'll keep in touch and appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy. Bye-bye. Keep well, eh? Bye.